Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, my name is Amartya Rupani and today's video is one of the most requested videos from those who have engineering degree and they want to know how to get a professional engineering license in Canada. So anyways, in this video, I'm going to walk you through the complete step-by-step -step process to apply to get your PhD license and this video is going to be super helpful for you because I've also shared some of the information based on my personal experience, which is not available online as well. So anyways, without wasting any time, let's start. Okay, let's first understand what does professional engineer mean. A professional engineer is an individual who has been issued a license by a provincial or territorial engineering regulatory body after demonstrating that they have the requisite education, skills, knowledge and work experience. Each province or territory of Canada has its own engineering regulatory body but in this video I will be talking about Ontario's engineering regulatory body and it is called PEO that means Professional Engineers Ontario. Now the question is why do you need PNG license? And is this possible to work without PNG in Canada? So guys the answer is yes you can work without PNG in Canada but there are certain factors that you need to keep in mind such as you can't call yourself an engineer if you don't have your PNG license you must have your PNG in order for you to work without the supervision of a professional engineer and if you're a professional engineer then your pay will be more than those who don't have their license and once you get your PNG license then you will be able to approve those engineering drawings by yourself which could make you an asset for your company so anyways these were a few main reasons that why do people go for png license and now it's time for me to walk you through the number of steps to get your png license and there are total five stages that you need to pass in order for you to get your png license so let me walk you through in detail one by one so the first step is to submit your application and it is super straightforward and easy process all you have to do is just go to their official website and the link of this is given in the description box below i wanted to mention that due to covid19 uh, they have made some changes in their application process before we had to mail our application to their address but now due to covid19 everything is online so you need to submit your application through email so anyways, uh, let me show you the application form that you need to fill out and you can get it from this link and it is given in the description box below as I said. So this is the application form that you need to fill out and it is super straightforward uh, process to do it. And as you can see, there are a total 8 pages. So the first 4 pages is your guide uh, that will provide you the instructions how to fill out your application and it will also give you the information that what documents are required what is the total cost to become a licensed engineer what information to be entered in the form and stuff like this so please read this guide it will help you to avoid all the mistakes and the rest four pages is your main application that you need to fill out so please enter all the information that is required and attach all the required documents as well let me just show you the list of all those documents that you need to attach with your application. So if you are a graduate of a non-Canadian engineering accreditation board engineering program that is non-CEAB, then this is the list that you need to provide. I will explain this to you in a bit that what does non-CEAB means. But for now, please see the list and the link of this um, page is given in the description box below. You can check that out. And this one is for the graduates of CEAB program. Okay, now let's move on to the next stage, which is the assessment of your application by PEO. Now, at this stage, PEO confirms whether your degree is equivalent to that of a graduate of a CEAB accredited program. Now, what is CEAB program? So basically, it is a Canadian Engineering Accreditation Board that assesses the engineering to ensure Canada's engineering education system remains amongst the best in the world. So, PEO will need to review the transcript with the bachelor's degree after the PNG application has been received to confirm to the applicant whether the academic requirement has been satisfied or not. And based on the assessment by Academic Requirement Committee, there are three possible outcomes that you can get and those are A, B and C. 
and let me explain those to you one by one okay so the first outcome is a which means the applicant has met the academic requirements and can go for the next step but most of the time it happens only when you have a degree from inside of canada that means you have degree from canadian institute then you will get outcome a and you can go for your next step but in most of the cases if you have degree from outside of canada then you will get outcome b which means you haven't met academic requirements and you will have to write technical exams which is also called confirmatory exams and outcome c means you haven't met the requirements for png application at all now in the decision if you have received outcome b that means you will have to write technical exams which is also called confirmatory exams as i said so you will be assigned four technical exams in total so the passing marks for each exam is at least 50 percent and you must achieve the average of technical exam marks at least 55 percent altogether and if you fail two out of four assigned exams then they will assign you other 18 exams in order for you to meet the academic requirements and that is called discipline specific exams program but in some cases they might call you for the interview instead of assigning these exams to prove your technical skills and work experience requirements but the good news is if you are assigned with exams then they have a policy which is called good performance review which says if an applicant writes two technical exams at the first sitting and achieves a minimum average of 65 percent in both exams with no marks below 60 percent in each exam then you can get exempted from the other two exams that means you don't have to write other two exams anymore you can get exempted from one exam out of four if you pass three technical exams in two exam settings and you achieve 60 percent or more in each technical exam you can also meet third criteria in this policy if you attempted two exams in the first sitting but failed one then you may still qualify for a good performance review and can get exempted from one exam out of four if you pass failed exam with marks of 70 percent or higher and achieve 60 percent or higher in third exam that you write in second sitting now there is time frame for you to write your technical exams in order for you to get your png license so the academic year of uh, peo starts from september 1st and ends at august 31st and you must write your first exam within the two academic years after getting letter from uh, peo and once you start your exam program then you must write at least one exam in each academic year and the total time frame for you to complete your four assigned technical exams is eight years but if you're assigned 10 uh, i mean 18 exams then you will have 10 years to complete those guys i just wanted to give you a tip if you are assigned 18 exams which is also called discipline specific exam program and of course it is not an easy job to pass all of these exams but you still have option to get exempted from these 18 exams once you get a job in canada and achieve four to five years of experience in your field as an engineer then you can write a letter to peo saying that uh, you have got work experience in canada and you can prove your technical skills through interview instead of writing those 18 exams i'm saying this because they have made exceptions in the past with other candidates and their exams got waived uh, by the interview and if you want to see what exams will be offered for your engineering area then this is the page where you can go and find your field of engineering let's say if you are from industrial engineering then uh, click list of exams and then it will take you on this page where you will see the complete list of all the exams for industrial engineering in the latter you will get this list and you will have to do three exams from group a and b and one exam from complementary studies and they will also provide instructions in the letter that what exams to be chosen from this list under certain conditions and when you go back on the same page you will find another link uh, that says recommended books for the exams so these are the list of books uh, that you need to refer in order to uh, pass those exams for industrial engineering so anyways this is how you find the list of exams and uh, recommended books for your area of engineering
and this is the website where you can get all the previous technical exams for all the engineering areas such as electrical engineering mechanical civil and the link of this website is given in the description box below so you can go there and get your exams of your own field for the past years and once you meet your academic requirements the next step is to attend the iron ring ceremony actually it is the ritual of the calling of an engineer and it has history behind this which you can read at this website and the link is given in the description box below so anyways the iron ring is worn in pinky finger of the working hand by an engineer who has attended the ceremony of this ring so this is the website where you can register yourself to attend the ceremony and they have registration dates as you can see and it is between april 1st and june 30th so if you want to attend this ceremony and get your ring then you need to register between these dates and there are different locations where this ceremony takes place and this is the application form that you need to fill out in order to apply to uh, this ring ceremony and the application fees is 50 dollars including tax so anyways all the requirements to apply and other information is given on this website and the link is given in the description box below you can check it out and guys it is super straightforward and easy process to apply okay so after meeting academic requirements the next step is to write your ppe exams which is professional practice exams so basically it is a three hour exams which is based on two parts law and ethics of canadian and ontario workplace and you must pass this exam within the two years of uh, meeting the academic requirements and you can write your exams in any of these five months in a year and these are the two books that you need to refer to pass your pp exam one is for ethics another one is for law and you can purchase it from any uh, retailer or bookstore okay once you pass your ppe exam the next step is to submit your experience uh, summary if you have it so the total work experience you need to get your png license is four years and from that if you have three years of experience from outside of canada it is acceptable but you must have one year of canadian work experience under the supervision of a professional engineer and guys if you have master's degree from one of the accredited canadian universities then that will be considered 12 months of work experience towards your 48 months of work experience for your png and after meeting all the requirements that i've explained in these five stages you're going to get your png as license. well as a stamp or a seal that is used to approve your drawings or engineering projects now let's just talk about the total cost to get your uh, png license and it is for the complete process from start to finish so the application fees is 406 dollars and 80 cents uh, that includes tax but this fees can be waived if you apply within the six months of your landing in canada and the next cost is for your pp exam and the fees for that is 225 and 50 cents including tax and for all the technical exams you need to pay one time fees uh, which is 700 dollars and for each exams there are 200 dollars and then again 360 dollars for submitting your engineering report and the final fees that is 339 uh, to get your license and then there is the annual fees that you need to pay which is 299 dollars and 45 cents and um, it is to remain licensed and there is another fees for engineer in training that is called eit which i haven't talked about in this video because it is an optional program and you can get registered in this program right after meeting the academic requirements so anyways i will be talking about this program in a separate video if you want so the fees for eit if you get registered in is 101 dollars and 70 cents okay guys so that was pretty much it for today and if you have any questions please let me know in the comment box i would be more than happy to answer them as soon as possible and if you like this video please give it a big thumbs up and do subscribe my channel because there's a lot more coming up for you guys till then you take care and i'll see you again